When I say make or tick, what do you think of? Probably network switches, right? Maybe even high speed 100 gig switches. Well, that's what we have right here. An arm based switch with two 100 gig ports, four 25 gig ports and six 10 gig ports. Oh, and um, 20 U.2 NVMe slots. Yeah, this is the Rose data server from Mikrotik, a first gen device that combines high speed networking and high capacity, high speed storage into a 1U chassis, all for under 2000 USD. I truly have never seen a device like this ever. And while it's pretty freaking awesome, it's not perfect. Let's talk about it. So the big ticket things here, like I mentioned, we have plenty of high speed networking ports and 20 U.2 NVMe slots. On top of that, we have a 16 core ARM AL73400 CPU, 32 gigs of RAM, dual M.2 SATA slots, a couple of USB ports, a one gig management port, an RJ45 serial port, redundant power supplies, and two SFF8644 ports. A lot to unpack here, a lot to talk about. Let's start with the heart of the system. The 16 core ARM chip is cool to see in a device like this because it does a few things. One, it's really power efficient, which allows this whole system to perform well in a 1U chassis. And two, it lowers the overall cost of the device. It isn't perfect though. The big compromise here is, while well, we get 20 U.2 slots, all of those are funneled through a PCIe switch that has a total bandwidth of just 16 lanes at PCIe Gen 3 speeds, so roughly 128 gigabits per second. I guess it's hard to call that a downside because that's still a ton of bandwidth, but when we're talking about 20 NVMe drives, the ceiling for what you can push through that is much higher. And like I mentioned, we get 32 gigabytes of RAM here, which I have no real opinion on, seems fun. Inside we get 10 fans, so plenty of potential airflow, which you'll probably need if you're populating all 20 bays, cause that'd be dense as hell. Another thing I want to address is the dual SFF 8644 ports, which you may initially think, cool, I can hook up a JBOD and add some more drives. Well, not quite. These ports aren't connected to any type of SAS controller, so you're just getting four lanes of PCIe Gen 3 each back to the CPU. You could use this for more PCIe expansion, but I'm struggling to think of a proper use case right now. Just figured I should mention that in case you were chubbed up thinking about adding some SATA drives. So when we power this guy on with six drives connected, I was seeing about 70 watts, which is comically low for a device with this many features. And at this point, you're probably wondering why this thing exists, because I was thinking the same thing. I actually had an interview with Druvis from Mikrotik and asked him that very question. He explained that it started out as a passion project to help out with local research being done that required both high speed networking between physical locations, as well as high capacity, high speed storage. And since they already have that high speed networking thing down, why not slap some NVMe drives on it, paint it green and call it a day, right? So yeah, in terms of hardware and specs, what you get from this thing for under $2,000 is actually crazy. And yes, it's objectively still a lot of money, but for folks out there who are buying systems with similar specs to this one, it's a huge discount. And now that we've talked about the specs and the actual hardware here, how about we talk about what it's like to actually use it? And I think there's a guy over there who can actually tell you about that. Hey, it's me, that guy over there. So setup isn't easy as just plugging in a network cable and then opening up a web browser, unfortunately. What you need to do is plug a cable into the first ethernet port or the management one and then connect the other end to a client device and set a static IP of 192.168.88.2, which will then allow you to discover the RDS via the Mikrotik Winbox configuration tool. All of this is in the documentation, by the way. Once you're in, it's just router OS. If you're used to that, then you'll feel at home. And if you're not, then you may be a little bit overwhelmed. RouterOS is an extremely powerful networking operating system that would honestly require multiple dedicated videos just to cover everything. So I'll leave that for someone else. For the purposes of this video, I'll just cover the basics. So I wanted my RDS connected directly to my main network via one of the 25 gig ports. And to make sure this was getting an IP address, I needed to configure that interface as a DHCP client so that it would request an IP for my router. And depending on your router, you may need to go into the interface and set the FEC mode to 74. For reference, I'm running a unified campus aggregation switch. Unfortunately, I couldn't get the 100 gig connection working between the RDS and my unified switch, no matter what combinations of settings I tried. I couldn't tell if this was a unify issue or a Mikrotik issue or just a skill issue. 
Anyway, at this point, we have a proper switch set up and you're free to do router OS things on here as you see fit. There is a quick set menu that gives you access to the basic features, which will help you get started. But while this is a cool network device, that's not really why you clicked on this video, was it? We wanna see how the hell Mikrotik is handling storage on a switch. So for testing purposes, I use two ICDoc M.2 to U.2 adapters, which uh, kind of fit if you wanna remove a bit of paint and metal from the chassis. Right now I have four proper one terabyte U.2 drives, so let's look at how we set them up in a RAID configuration. So here we are in router OS and yeah, it looks like router OS. So if you wanna see the actual disks that are connected to the device, you can go in here to system and go to disks. And just like that, we can see all of them. You'll see here are my two uh, IC dock ones, which I've already set up in a RAID configuration. And here are my almost one terabyte um, U.2 Gen 3 drives. So there's no real way to set up the RAID configuration directly in here. So we'll actually have to go into the terminal. All right, so once in here, we are going to do a slash disk, and then we are going to do add RAID device count equals the amount of drives we have, which is four. Then we give it a RAID type, which we are going to do RAID zero because we're crazy like that. Then we're going to designate a slot for it. Now we already used RAID one. So how about we do RAID two counting? Yeah. And the type is just RAID. And we should have a uh, RAID two slot created. So let's go back into disks and there it is. Voila. So now we need to add our drives to this RAID array. And you can do this one at a time. You go to set, then the disk name. So I'll actually have to go back and get those. So we have NVMe 9, 13, 17, and slot one, apparently. I don't know why it's configured like that. So you go set, NVMe 9, raid master equals raid two, and raid roll equals zero. Ah, we need to wipe the drives, great. Okay, so I'm just formatting them to ext4, which I assume will be fine. Okay, let's try this again. Okay, that worked, great. Uh, so we have nine, let's do 13. I need to actually pay attention here. So with the next drive, you need to uh, increment the raid roll. So this is gonna be one. And we have raid or roll two for the next disc. And then we have roll three for our last one, which was slot one for some reason. Okay, and now we have our RAID block device. So how about we put a file system on there? So let's go format, drive, read to file system, ext4. Very cool. So now going back into disks, we have our RAID set up with a file system on top. Very cool. A uh, total of three terabytes, which sounds right. Yeah, considering they were about 800 gigs each. So yeah, that's about right. And now we kind of have two options for actually using this. One is your classic SMB share, which is pretty easy to set up. It's not really uh, robust here as you're about to see. So to do that, uh, you can go into IP down here. You'll see SMB, click on that. It's gonna have some basic settings here that you can configure. And then over here, you'll have shares. And you can see I already created a share for my uh, first RAID setup. Let's just create another one. We'll call this one RAID2 share. And the directory, we're gonna point that at our newly created uh, RAID2 array. You can specify some valid users. So let's go ahead and add our uh, service user, then hit apply, hit okay. And just like that, we have an SMB share. Now for users, you can just go down into the same menu, go to users and create those as you need them. Again, there's not a bunch of crazy settings for this because this is a uh, router operating system, uh, networking operating system, not really designed to handle storage just yet. Now this is a first gen product, so hopefully they add some more functionality, but yeah, that's how you do a basic share and we can connect to it from this device. Let's go ahead and try it. Enter our service user. Boom. We have our network share. Pretty neat. It's a uh, NAS and a high speed switch. All in one. That's for NVMe over TCP, which essentially takes the storage on your server and sends that as a block device over the network. Very similar to iSCSI, but a bit faster. There is no UI for this. So back into the CLI we go. 
Luckily, this is pretty basic. It's literally only one line. So again, we're gonna go into the disk section and we're gonna do set and then our block device, which is read two. Then we're gonna go NVMe TCP export equals yes. And then we're gonna set the port NVMe TCP port equals now default, it's 4420. And just like that, it has been exported. So on the other side, you can go to a client and get this set up as a block device. And now depending on which operating system you run, this will range in various levels of complexity. For most modern Linux distros, you'll be able to load the NVMe kernel module without any additional steps. After that, you'll just use another command to connect to that exported disk using the IP of the host and the port. Then you have a block device mounted, which is your NVMe pool on the other side of your network. Pretty neat stuff. And at the end of the day, this is all most people are going to need. If you're in the camp that needs both 100 gig networking and 20 U.2 drives, you're probably also in the camp that won't have a problem digging around in router OS and getting your hands dirty in the CLI. I think it's pretty obvious this device isn't designed to replace your Synology system. This is definitely a niche product, but a very cool one at that. Overall thoughts here are pretty positive, I'd say. The hardware itself is fantastic, and the only complaint I really have is that it only supports 7mm drives, where a lot of U.2 drives are 15mm, but then you're balancing out the amount of drives versus a 1U space, and with just 16 lanes of Gen 3, do you really need 20 drives? I don't know. And if I'm being nitpicky, the drive sleds feel a little cheap as they're just flimsy plastic, but I mean, at this point, I'm just bitching. Oh, and maybe a SAS controller for the SFF ports, but all of this would increase the price. So again, I can't reiterate what a deal this is at under $2,000 because there legit isn't anything out there like this. And I know you could build your own system with similar specs, but I'm fairly certain you couldn't do it for cheaper and get the same performance, capacity, and power efficiency as this device. But hey, go prove me wrong. On the software side, well, I'm torn. Since this is a first gen product, I didn't really expect a whole lineup of storage features and container options and all this in a brand new OS, but I maybe would have liked to see a dedicated storage section within router OS with all the dedicated options I'd need for managing disks, shares, users, all that good stuff. I'm hoping that if this device is a hit that MicroTik will invest some R&D into the software side, we'll see. What do you guys think though? Is this something you can see a use case for at your company or business? Or are you an absolute goon who's gonna snag one of these for your home lab? Let me know down in the comments. But that's all I have for this one. If you like this video, then drop a like and subscribe if you wanna see me do more with this thing. I'm gonna give a huge shout out to my YouTube members and my Patreons. You guys are my high speed NAS slash switch, which is ARM based and has all the high speed ports and a sexy UI with all the options. Y'all are great. And if you're still watching, you're a serial port. Thank you so much. And I'll see you in the next one.